Hello, my name is Abel. Welcome back to What the Movie. And today we're going to be talking about mimesis as well as trying to think of as many uh, synonyms for bad as we can. Uh, here next to me we have the wonderful Ash, <laughs> uh, star of the movie Mimesis. And on the couch we have our usual suspects. We have Kimani and Evan and Thomas. So before we get started on talking about mimesis, we're going to be talking about B-movie. Uh, Ash, do you want to start us off? Oh, we're just jumping right into it then? We usually do yeah. that. So I heard that we were talking about the B-movie yesterday night <laughs> at like 11.30 p.m. and then I had to work a full day so I didn't get to refresh my knowledge but this is one of the only movies that I can say I've ever watched and just been like, that was despicable. <laughs> How bad it was. Um, not just because of the blatant continuity errors and just the <laughs> general crappiness of the entire movie, but because I think it argues a really dangerous um, moral argument that we should all avoid. Um, if I can just get into this really quick. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm going to yeah, step yeah. right onto my soapbox here. <clears throat> so I think one of the myths that capitalists and proponents of capitalism like to uphold is the fact that if we give everyone their basic needs, if we you know, meet everybody's needs in that sense, and we're not scared of being homeless or like, you know, having to have a surgery just bankrupt us, then we're all going to become lazy. And I think that that's a really dangerous sentiment, to be honest with you, because I don't think it's true at all. I don't think that we should constantly be in fear of be? death. <laughs> be fear. I've asked for this. <laughs> oh, God. This is a huge I day for us. This is a strong start. This is a real strong start. <laughs> this is a massive you, W Ash. for this funny is a very, people. Very different way. Look, if they would have cut it off, uh, like Act Two, fine. It's just a shitty movie. But then they had to go into Act Three and then make it this whole like argument about our systems and the structure that we live in. I'm not, I'm not laughing at your in. argument. It's, I'm not laughing at your argument. I, I actually, I actually agree with you. It's just. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll pass the baton to you, Thomas, then. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, so, I, so I think I'm unique in this thing because, surprise, surprise, for me, I didn't see the movie for the, before we watched this. I'd never, I'd never actually seen this movie before. And trust me, it was an experience watching it this afternoon. It was. I took, I took notes. Um, that is I've never, I haven't done that for any of the other movies that we've done. I'm obviously not going to read all of them, but like I have a lot of notes. A whole constitution full of notes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to pick a random item from this list here, just to, just to kind of get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. um, so there's. <laughs> go ahead, man. So, <laughs> go ahead with your bad self. Come on. Um, there's a section where. Um, <laughs> where the human main character and the B, played by Jerry Seinfeld, are on a date, going right past that before we before we even talking about that part. <laughs> okay. um, it's the first time they talk, and it's like cutting into like right after they have a conversation, and Jerry says something like, and so then he says, "Oh, I thought you said Guatemalans. I'm not marrying a watermelon." And I was just like, "So is this B telling racist jokes?" <laughs> Yes, it's, it's like yes. there's a lot of racist stuff in this movie, boy. That's Jerry Seinfeld in 2007. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll transition from there because uh, that's a perfect way for me to describe this movie. Um, so this movie cost 150 million dollars. I just want oh everybody to know God. that. Oh my God! In 2007 money? Yeah. yeah. In 2007. And see, they pre-recession pre money. Baby. So with that recession money, let me baby. just say that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to reveal what, who the director of this movie is. They made Prince of Egypt. And they really? made this. Really? Yeah. You did your no. research. And the writer that's a, that's a of Wikipedia this movie, search one away, of them, but Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, of course. Which is the reason why this movie 
script is so, you know, Smithsonian. Um, <laughs> Why is the budget so much of $150 million? Look, all I'm going to say, I'm going to list off a couple of things, maybe like three things. Number one, Chris Rock plays a mosquito and makes a Lori joke about how they're all blood-sucking parasites. There's that. <laughs> um, number two, uh, there's a crashing plane joke 60 years after 9-11. Um, number three, there was a racism allegations joke in the court case and a black oh, dude scoots was. over. Of course I noticed it. Um, yeah. But you know, I... <laughs> yeah, that was, and that then was pretty I wild. I think maybe the fourth, yeah. Uh, and then the fourth thing, um, man, what did you choose with? Uh, Renee Zellweger agreed to being in this movie. There you go. So that was uh, Renee Zellweger, Oscar, Oscar, Oscar nominated Rizal Renee Zellweger agreed to be in this movie. So I could go on, but I don't want to. Kaimani, Joe uh, Patience, come on. Yeah, no, it felt like a very weird, uh, it felt like they gave Jerry Seinfeld a blank check to, oh, what if I made a movie about bees? <laughs> 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 What, what if, yeah. What's up with that? Yeah. No, it was. It, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I do. I ethically, I very much agree with Ash on like what this movie is saying, which I think is funny because the first half of it is a very like pretty explicitly pro labor sh like right? shebang. It's about oh, wow. Jerry saying, why do I have to work this job for the rest of my life that I don't want to, you know, like it's a, it's inherently this kind of like, uh, it's anti-establishment in a certain way, in a way that I, in, a, in, a, in a way that he takes action and it actually works and he has, uh, and, he, and it, he does it through like legal systems and all that which I think is wild for a kid's movie, but then it has to circle back on it and be like, no, actually, things are the way they're supposed to be and shitty for a reason, so, right. you know. And he still works the same, a job for the same job for the rest of his life, but this time, it's a job he likes. And, well, and he has wondered. a girlfriend, <laughs> so it's better now, and yeah, no. Yeah, oh no, go ahead. I think, obviously, I think that's whack. Uh, but other than, <laughs> you know, there's not much of other like I'm not gonna get wow, too like man. upset about it. I think it's I think it's stupid. It's I think it's deep. I think it's a, irresponsible. But uh, other than that, I thought it was kind of weird and funny. Like I, oh, I can I can I say one thing? I'm sorry, Patrick Warburton as Ken. He's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> yes, very very best very characters of all time. Was, These I are winter boots. boots. That is one of the best. Tim's on. Why would it ever? He was the only sane character. I was on his side. Where will this <laughs> nightmare <laughs> end? Yes, that's one of my. He 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 needs more jobs. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, it was. Um, I, I thought B. Larry King. I thought <laughs> that bit was funny. It started funny, and then it, they they circled back on it, and then it stopped being funny. But it kind of ended up funny when he pointed out that he was Jewish. Which like, are they? Do they have B. Judaism? Jesus. I don't know what the implications are of these Boy, things. I'm not gonna go into this. I don't want to have a full. No, that's my of course, they, of course, they didn't think it through. It's it's like it's like supposed the to be a only cutaway gag. like it's, sentient beings are the like. Well, there's like the, the humans who are like able to talk and stuff and then there's just every insect Bones. and then there's yeah. a bear that shows up in the courtroom <laughs> and he's just a wild animal That's <laughs> so. sentient, though, because because he tells the bear to like chill out and the bear's like okay like, well, and then like there's a bring, cow at the end they, of the movie. They bring, oh, yeah, there is a cow! There, there's they, a cow at the end of the movie who's seeking out Barry's legal advice, I was, which he's not a lawyer, by the way. He yes, he is. is. No, he is a lawyer. He doesn't become a lawyer. He, he says he's a lawyer. He says he's a lawyer. He that says, means he is one. Yes. So. And he, <laughs> he, did, he, he did win a legal battle for the sake of all so he, be kind. So he went to six years of legal school as a B? Three, six days of legal B school. Legal school. Yeah, legal B legal, legal school. No, the yeah. timing of everything is a whole nother thing <laughs> that I really want to circle back to eventually because none of that makes makes any sense. Like they started off with this whole like funny joke about how bees only live a short period of time and he got, you know, like one day to go on his like whole trip or whatever. And then they just go through this plot line where they pursue an entire lawsuit in the US legal system. And I'm like, this bitch would be dead, right? <laughs> like, there's no way. If you want to make this joke in the beginning of the movie, you created this world building, live in it. Like, I just don't understand why you're breaking that at the end of the movie. It feels like Whoa. two different people. Hey, it's very <laughs> no, it feels like two different people wrote the beginning and the end. Like, it doesn't have any through Felt like line. Jerry Seinfeld wrote the first act and then got bored and yeah, said, exactly. oh, <laughs> I'm the highest paid writer. comedian in the world. Go finish <laughs> the script for me. Yeah, I had noticed, I noticed like a lot of Easter eggs to other like Disney products, prod you know, that's what DreamWorks does is they always, you know, shit on Disney. Um, so there, when Ken had like the, the like brochure, the picture that he had had like the chef's hat, 
That's like a reference to oh, Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Yeah, from Gustav or whatever it's called. Gustav. Which is the same year that that came out. It that's, is, but they, they always do that. I mean, they, they, yeah. they got and then, bodied by Ratatouille. Like, also, let's be real. What are we talking about? Also, the bear. You mentioned the bear, and I thought it myself. I was like, why does this bear look so similar? It's the same asset or the same bear from Over the Hedge. So uh, that's oh, yeah. it's the they same. It did look really similar. Yeah, now that they I think they, about they it. lazied yeah. out on some of the uh, animation because what this yeah. movie lazy? <laughs> it cost 150 million dollars to make. <laughs> it, 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 it's Jerry Seinfeld. Seinfeld. The only ones yeah. that are lazy are the workers, okay, that quit their jobs because yeah. they got compensated <laughs> then, for their honey, okay. And then, and then they literally get. They literally like snipe Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I was just like, that's just. <laughs> and Pig was fine with it. Pig was fine with that it. Is, he didn't move. That yeah. is Disney. Yeah, it's just. Like, 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 wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, how does that work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then. Um, <laughs> Can we talk about the oh. other movie now? Can we talk about the other movie? <laughs> no, wait, wow. wait, wait. Wow. <laughs> there, I, okay, I wanted. I said this multiple times before the episode started, but. Okay, so there's one thing about this movie that bothered me for years. It's a lot. I'd never seen it before, by the way. I didn't know the plot. But because it was such a meme for a long time, and part of that meme was just, oh, copy pasting the entire script in different places. And I never read past like the first line. And the first line is, according to all known laws of aviation, a bee should not be able to fly, but they fly anyways. And it's so stupid because it's not true. It's not true. It's, Go it's, it's just like, it, that comes from like a couple like drunk um, aerodynamics mathematicians in the 1930s who were measuring like what a gliding bee like, if a bee were to glide like an airplane, it wouldn't be able to fly. No shit. <laughs> it's a bee. It doesn't fly that way. It flaps its wings. It's so stupid. Yet somehow the script just gets worse from there. <laughs> like. That's black, actually black, the high black. point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we've, we've talked about... Mimesis. Does anyone have uh, any positive things to say, though? I, I said some positive things. I thought it was, I liked oh, the. I, I you liked sound the like whole Seinfeld. There. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I awesome. liked. I liked the generally. I liked the court case. I thought that was kind of funny. I, I thought that yeah. whole bit was funny. I thought the the, 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 su the southern lawyer was funny. I thought that was the only part of the movie that had any real like thrust in terms of like thrust. the stakes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, nah, continue. Don't, <laughs> don't get confused. No, yeah, no that on. was a really good adjective. <laughs> no, verb? I think verb, whatever. Verb. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it didn't have any propulsion up until that point, really. <laughs> like, plot-wise. There wasn't anything going. There wasn't anything. It was just kind of like, oh, I'm talking to a woman. I'm talking to a human woman. Wow. I just yeah. and, like want to say that hearing Jerry Seinfeld and Patrick Warburton like be in the same movie together are they're two people who I think I've heard more impressions of them than I've actually heard of them talking. So yeah. it just sounded yeah. like a fever dream yeah. the entire time. Yeah. Sound like yeah. Like yeah. These are winter boots. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I have one last thing, like positive yeah. thing to say. Uh, John Goodman's having the time of his life voicing yeah. that character. I, I feel like some of the voice actors are having fun yes. and I'm having fun with them. Yeah. I don't hate this movie. I think it's like for an absurdist movie, for a movie that I should never think about critically ever because it's the B movie, I personally was just like, this is the most fever dreamish movie since No Way Home. But that's all I'm going to say. I, I don't care. Um, I don't know. It's weird and I love it. So Let's talk okay. about Mimesis now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, actual that whole time with good that, really movie. About the fact that the bees wanted to have, wanted to have sex with the lady. There's <laughs> 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 also about. incest jokes riddled and throughout. That too. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Abel. <laughs> Mimesis time. You're not. All right. So we're not, to our host we're not going to spoil Mimesis at all because it's not out. it had one showing uh, mm -hmm. yesterday as of filming. Um, I wasn't there. It's going to be on VIP. Cable 8's YouTube channel shortly. Um, I would really encourage you all to check it out uh, when it's up. Uh, I think it's extremely creative and really original in ways that I was not expecting. Um, and yeah, uh, let's uh, kick it off. Uh, I guess Evan, let's start with oh, you. Okay, I'll be on the spot. Okay, um, <laughs> I, I thought it was great. I had a fun time. Um, I'm, I'm sure everybody at the premiere also had a fun time as well. And um, man, I made a review of it like yesterday. But I think it's really interesting is that from the hints that I've been giving from you, uh, uh, Kaimani and Carter was that it was like the thing. But I didn't expect it to be like David Robert. David Robert Mitchell's It Follows, like specifically that one, um, which is a movie that I love. So I was I was digging it from scene one. I thought 
uh, you did an amazing job. I think you did an <laughs> incredible job doing a dual performance. Very convincing. Um, and I, I love the rest of the supporting cast. Kaimani, you were an awesome comedic <laughs> actor. I just want you to know that you have like a you have like a Kieran Culkin type of humor, and I love that. Um, uh, but you know, I, I, I really enjoyed the pacing for an hour and ten. I was engaged the entire time. There's constantly stuff happening, but not in like an ADHD kind of way. It's like, oh, it's like there's a story that's continuously moving. Um, creative shots. My favorite scene in the whole film is actually when the aspect ratio changes to four three. Um, and I thought it was a cool little trippy ride that I was just like, this is some cool, um, I don't know, it's, just, it's a lot of cool ideas. You executed it well. How you guys did the flashback um, was uh, very cool. Like when you guys were in the winter and they had the scarf in there, uh, which once again, I don't want to spoil it, just little tiny tidbits. Um, but that was great. It was a great little, little creature feature and I really enjoyed it. Kimani, what did uh, you think of this movie that you helped create? Yeah, it's it's obviously hard to talk about it like critically because you know you you worked on it and like mm. I really like all the people that worked on it and it was very fun to make for the most part. Um, even though one of the scenes was really annoying to shoot because it took all night and it was out in the middle of nowhere, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it was overall how I mean if like looking at it after it was all done, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Um, and yeah, no, I don't really have much to say about it other than I think Joseph and Ash really did a great job. Yeah. Also, Alex, the sound designer, I should yes, say that. Yes, dude, that's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's crazy, like, those sounds were so crisp. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was really unsettling. Yes. Yeah. In like a good way, of course, yeah. it's a horror movie. Uh, do you yeah. want to say anything about Oh, your own movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> fun. Um, I don't know. I'm obviously very critical of my own part in it. I think that watching it, I was like nitpicking all these little weird, awkward things that I did, or like continuity errors that I forgot about. But for like, you know, the budget that we had, being a student film, for doing it in less than four months, like I am so proud of what we created. And like you guys already said it, but like the pacing was spot on, and like. Joseph and Ali worked really hard. I mean, the whole crew and team did, but just with editing um, and sound alone, like that was really just, it blew me away because I was not, like I've watched a lot of Cable 8 content in my time. <laughs> and I was expecting to go into this and be like, oh no, how are people gonna sit through an hour and 10 minutes of me? <laughs> um, but I don't know, they, they made me look good. And so I appreciate that, yeah. I, yeah. I, can definitely like like there is a tiny tiny budget on this thing and it's like <laughs> it, it does like I guess it does show because it is such a tiny budget but like every single scene had something like unique about it and then the way that it was done and like you can just tell like how much effort was put into it and how yeah. much like enthusiasm it's just it's very apparent and and there are sequences where I literally thought to myself how they do that and if a movie can make me do that then it's freaking awesome so yeah, I, yeah you guys did a good job mm -hmm. yeah um, Thomas, can you talk about how excited you well, are to I watch this for the first time? Terrible. <laughs> it was the no, I haven't seen it, but um, yeah, I, uh, I was, I have, I haven't seen it, obviously, but um, you know, I know, uh, I know, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Ash's uh, work in uh, Pocket Aces. We were in Pocket Aces together, and uh, uh, you're an incredible performer, and uh, Kimani, you're really funny on screen as well mm -hmm. yeah, you and you know not as not as funny in person but the but then I, I also know that Joseph is uh, well he was the assistant uh, on on pocket aces and he's incredibly talented he did those um, those drone shots that uh, if you've seen pocket aces you know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. there's some incredible drone shots mm -hmm. especially in the final episode okay. And yes, so, you can make a Kia Soul yeah. look cool. Yeah, <laughs> really made it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I don't know how. Yeah. So, and you know, and Ali's also great. So I'm thinking about like if, if he can make that just like that little short little scene really visually interesting and engaging and stuff, and like, you know, wait, feel way more for something than I've ever felt in a production that I was in. You know, and I cannot wait to see an entire movie like directed by you, like by him and by um, and having you guys in it and. Uh, you know, also I just love horror movies, especially well done, low budget horror <laughs> movies. And so, because you know, it's it's kind of a cliche in the in the industry. But if you the easiest easiest I say quote unquote 
the best, the, mo the smartest decision to do with a small budget is to do horror, since you can imply a lot of stuff, and you can do a lot of stuff with that, and I don't know. I'm really excited. Uh, I was bugging Joseph about it last night. It was just like, when this, when's this going to come out? Because I couldn't, because I couldn't come to the premiere, and I was so upset about that. <laughs> um, yeah, there will be. There's a showing on uh, Wednesday. Uh, oh, I thought it was Thursday. Maybe Thursday. It's Thursday. April 27th. It is Thursday. It is Thursday. Wait, what day is the 27th? Is it Thursday? Thursday. Thursday is the 27th. Thursday is the 27th. Okay. It's the same day as the banquet, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is that yeah. There's the same another time? showing. I think so. Shit. Banquet's going to go very long. Um, yeah. Anyways, I would also would like to give out a shout out to uh, the poster of Mimesis. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. like a painting. It's on like, I'm not even sure. I, apparently it's been taking all semester. I can't remember the name of the person. Casey. Uh, Casey, yes. Yeah, Casey painted that. Mm -hmm. So it's like an acrylic painting. Really well done. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. It was there last night at the premiere, and it was mm -hmm. like absolutely incredible to look at. Um, it's like one of those po those posters that like I think about um, if it was like the poster for like a major movie, you know, that was getting that was you know was going to be like. A, and obviously, you know, maybe it will happen. Maybe Mimesis mm -hmm. will like go viral on YouTube, have a million views. Oh, but um, <laughs> but um, awesome. if but like if it was like a major release movie or something like that, that I think that poster would like would like find its place among like uh Could stand out yeah like most iconic posters because like it it i the first time i saw it was on a flyer that was outside of the einstein bagels mm -hmm. and it was like blowing in the wind and it was just like it was How ominous. It, add, it added like that kind of ominous to this to it so um but, it, but it's, a, it's a really striking poster so congrats to uh, casey yeah. for making that mm -hmm. so. gave me a lot of like it reminded me of some very iconic posters i've seen recently like malignant that movie had an incredible poster mm -hmm. barbarian which the poster actually does make an appearance yeah, mm -hmm. a couple appearances in the, the movie. font makes an appearance um, in the movie as well yeah. yeah uh i'm not sure if we have much else to say without spoiling it so go watch it we can yeah. go back to what, talk about b movie now it's much better than the b movie more <laughs> thought is. was put into mimesis in half the time probably less than half the time oh and, like, yeah. <laughs> not um, even, I think not even a little one percent that's generous for mimesis like it's one percent of 150 that's like no like point zero zero oh, yeah. <laughs> i think it was just like joseph spending his own money on yeah. things yes. a lot of the time well yeah this is the last traditional episode of what the movie for um, this semester until it comes and it back the next last semester. one that i am in yeah I, I won't be here for the next one because yeah. they're they're filming it tomorrow and i work tomorrow so we will be uh talking with uh ash again as well as ali and joseph yes. from the director and producer for Mimesis. So yeah, uh, until next time, uh, keep watching those movies. Yeah. I'll see you around. Hey, can I shout out myself? <laughs> leave for the yeah. final time. Yeah. Everyone hey. shout out yourself. If no, you it's so like, cause, just because I, I had a great time on this show, and I wanted to say that first of all. But also, I have a YouTube channel that I, I also do you, you, I, I do movie stuff. Anyway, um, I can I can just I can just like send you guys the link or some whatever. But. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I, I'm, I realize I am now just hijacking it at the end, but uh, this was a great show to be on. And um, I th and like I already knew Abel and Kimani, it was a pleasure to meet you, Evan. Hey. And um, I hope to continue like being in contact with you guys. And, and you, you know, Ash, you were kind of only here for the last episode. <laughs> but, uh, well, this set got much better after I showed up. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it was also, it's also just great. Uh, yeah, it's just great to be on the show with you guys. And yeah. You look go. forward to doing more Cable 8 stuff and look forward to just seeing you guys again in the future. Cable 8 stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. um, that was so awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, see ya. <laughs> <laughs>